Early morning, August 14th, 2005. The cabin crew of Helios Airways Flight 522 are preparing for their trip from the island of Cyprus to Athens, Greece. Andreas Prodromo is 25. Prodromo is a flight attendant now, but he has bigger plans. One day he wants to fly for Helios. In the cockpit, Captain Hans Merton is an East German, a contract pilot hired by Helios for the busy holiday season. His co-pilot is from Cyprus. Pambos Heralambus has been working exclusively for Helios for the last five years. Before beginning any flight, crews are required to perform dozens of checks on various pieces of onboard equipment. It's a routine but necessary procedure. Doors are closed. Helios is a charter airline. In all, there are 115 passengers on the morning flight. Flight attendants, please take your seats. Just a few minutes after 9 in the morning, Helios Airways Flight 522 lifts off into the bright sunshine. Nicosia Area Control, this is Helios 522. Request cruising at 340. Helios 522, you are cleared to climb to 340. Have a good day. Set 340, 340. Minutes into the flight, the plane is still climbing towards its cruising altitude. Suddenly, an alarm blares in the cockpit. What is it? Takeoff config warning? The flight crew is confused. The takeoff configuration alarm normally only sounds on the ground. It tells pilots their jet isn't ready for takeoff. The crew doesn't know why it's sounding now. Operations. This is flight 522, over. Flight 522, what can I do for you? We have a takeoff config warning on. With the first alarm still beeping in the cockpit, things become even more confusing. Their master caution alarm goes off. It could indicate that some systems on board are overheating. We now have a master caution. I find it very hard to understand. His accent is quite thick. Flight 522, what can I do for you? While the pilots and ground engineers try to troubleshoot the two alarms, most passengers have no idea there's a problem until... <laughs> Everyone, stay calm and please remain seated. Everyone, please put the oxygen masks on completely over your mouth and nose. pilots are unaware that the oxygen masks in the cabin have dropped. And they still don't know why their takeoff configuration warning is on, or why their systems are overheating. Can you confirm that the pressurization panel is set to auto? Where are my equipment cooling circuit breakers? Behind the captain's seat. Helios 522, can you see the circuit breakers? And now, the engineer on the ground loses contact with the aircraft. Helios 522, can you hear me? It's less than 30 minutes after takeoff, and flight 522 is still on course. The plane is high above the Mediterranean Sea, and headed straight towards Athens. Air traffic control can't get any response from the captain or co-pilot. The flight to Greece normally takes an hour and a half. But the passenger jet has been in the air for over two hours, circling in a holding pattern. More than three million people live in Athens. A plane slamming into the city could cause an incredible loss of life. The Greek Air Force scrambles two of its most sophisticated fighter jets to investigate the Helios plane. One of the jets flies closer to the cockpit. Someone is in the co-pilot's seat, slumped over the controls. But there's no sign of the captain at all. He can see passengers in their seats, but none of them react to the presence of the jet. Then, the pilot sees someone moving in the cockpit. That 
that I control. There is one person moving in the cockpit of Helios 522. Helios 522, do you read, over? The F-16s continue shadowing the jet, but there's no response at all from the cockpit. Suddenly, the 737 turns left and begins to quickly descend. From more than 10,000 meters, the plane drops towards the ground. Ilios 522. Do you read? Over. Then, 2,100 meters above the ground, the person in the captain's seat acknowledges the fighter jet for the very first time. But no words are exchanged. Just after 12 o'clock, almost three hours after it took off from the island of Cyprus, Helios Flight 522 slams into the ground. Saturday ACC, Helios 522 is down. Repeat, Helios 522 is down on Gramatico Hill. Over. Fire and rescue workers rush to the crash site. There are no survivors. It is the worst air crash in the history of Greece. Investigators immediately start looking for the cause of the crash. Bodies recovered from the wreckage are brought to the offices of Athens' chief coroner. Autopsies add more mystery to the case. Everyone on board the plane was alive at the time of the crash. But if the passengers were alive the entire flight, why didn't the pilot of the fighter jet see any activity inside the cabin? And who was at the controls as the jet circled over Athens? The person at the controls of the plane when it crashed was flight attendant Andreas Prodromo. When Chief Investigator Akrivo Solakis listens to the final moments of the flight, Mayday. Mayday. this was no terrorist act. Flight 5. Prodromo was calling for help. Solakis hears five separate maydays on the tape. When he was seen at the controls, Flight 522 had been in the air for almost three hours. And the reason the Helios plane seemed to veer away from the F-16s following it was because its left engine was out of fuel. No matter what caused the alarms to sound, the ultimate reason for the crash was simple. Eventually, the plane ran out of fuel and crashed, killing 121 people. Chief Investigator Akrivo Solakas focuses on a small control panel found in the wreckage of the ravaged jet. The P-5 pressurization panel ensures that passengers have enough air to breathe, even at high altitudes. During normal flight, a plane's engines force air into the cabin to ensure oxygen circulates during the trip. Normally, pressurization takes place automatically but when the pressurization switch is set to manual, both the captain and co-pilot are responsible for maintaining the cabin atmosphere using a controller. Solakis learns that during the early morning maintenance check on Helios 522, ground engineers had turned the P5 switch to manual. When the test was over, they didn't turn the switch back to automatic. but neither the pilot nor co-pilot saw it. As a result, after takeoff, the cabin would not pressurize automatically. Not turning the switch back to automatic was a deadly, hidden danger. The dwindling oxygen levels could also help explain some of the crew's bizarre behavior. Solakis believes that the captain may have been checking on the circuit breakers behind his seat when he and the co-pilot finally ran out of air. And unlike in the cabin, the oxygen masks in the cockpit do not automatically deploy if the atmosphere begins to thin. Fifteen months after the crash, Greek authorities released the official report on Helios Airways Flight 522. The discovery of one small switch holds the key to the entire crash. Passenger masks are supplied by a chemical generator above their seats but the generators only produce enough oxygen to last about 12 minutes. For those who did put their masks on, they would have remained conscious for several minutes until their oxygen ran out. Then they too would have passed out. Without a flight crew, 
Helios 522 would have continued to Athens on autopilot. When the crew didn't take control, the autopilot would have then put the jet in a holding pattern as it flew over the airport. But Prodroma was a scuba diver and a former soldier in the Cypriot Special Forces. His training may have helped him to stay alert a little longer. But to survive after the passenger oxygen system stopped working, he needed another solution. The 737 had four portable oxygen bottles. Using them would have given him some freedom. After three hours in the air, everyone who didn't have bottled oxygen would have been unconscious. As it approached Athens, Flight 522 was now a ghost plane. As the F-16s roared to meet the jet, and with his oxygen running out, he must have known that he too was almost out of time. Yet to the very end, he didn't give up. When he returns to the cockpit, the young flight attendant who dreamed of becoming a pilot calls for help. But no one can hear him. Likely because the radio was still tuned to Larnaca, the airport on Cyprus from where the flight had taken off. Fighting hypoxia and struggling to control an airplane larger than any he had ever flown, Prodromo was in an impossible situation. Even if he could have landed the plane, it was now too late. Flight 522 was out of time and fuel. north of Athens where Helios 522 crashed, there are faded photographs of many of those who died. Bleached by the brilliant Mediterranean sun, they gaze over the rugged, ancient terrain. Silent witnesses to one of the world's most bizarre and tragic airline disasters. <laughs> 